If you are looking to get the audit records from Power BI services to your Azure Blob Storage account or you want to generate a record on the top of that, then this video is for you. If you are working on Power BI, then you already know the importance of audit records in Power BI service. But there is a constraint. You can only get 90 days of the audit records through Power BI service portal where you can go to the admin portal and you can get them through Microsoft Office 365. However, in the big organizations, we really need to get the audit data. We need to know how many users are working, who's going to view the report and much more. So how to get that audit data more than 90 days? Well, in this video, you are going to get to know everything. And if you really want to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. Before proceeding further, you should know that there are certain prerequisites. If you really want to work on the audit data, then you should have first of all one Azure account. Then you should also have one Power BI account with the global admin permissions. It can be a free account, but you should have global admin permissions. Also, while working on this one, please make sure that your account is not MFA enabled. That means Multi-factor authentication should not be there, otherwise you won't be able to run the scripts for this case. And lastly, make sure that you have logged in into your Azure portal with the same account that you are being logged in into Power BI service. In order to complete this task, you have to follow certain steps. For example, you have to create one function app, then inside the function app you have to create the function. Additionally, you have to also create a blob storage account. And in that blob storage account, you have to use the Azure copy. For that, we have to download certain modules as well. Don't worry about any of these things. I'm going to let you know step by step how you can achieve it. So let's start from our very first step. First of all, we have to download some of the modules in order to complete this task. For that, I'm currently into my windows where I have this script which is going to save AZ copy module. So what you can do, you can simply copy and paste the script. But remember that when you are gonna go into Windows PowerShell IAC, you have to run it as an administrator. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So this script is going to download the AZ copy module into the folder at desired location. So I ask you again to please download into the C drive itself. Or if you are using D drive, you can also use that but preferably I'll say go with the C drive and I'm going to show you in a bit later why I'm saying so. Secondly, you have to also download Power BI modules as well. And here you can see a very short and simple script to download all the Power BI modules. Once you are going to download all the modules, then you can check them too. So please go to your C drive like I'm over here on my PC. This is my C drive. And here I have two folders. One is easy copy where I can see, okay, my module is there. Then I can also go to PowerShell downloaded modules and where I have these seven modules. So total there would be eight modules that we are going to use for this particular task. So let's proceed further. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to on my Azure portal and there we are going to create one Azure function app. For that, I'm over here and here you can simply type function app where you can see that I have already worked on it. So it's appearing. Otherwise, just type over here function app, which you can see over here. Now I have already two functions app that I'm using over here. And this is the one that I'm using. But if you would like to create new, just hit on this button create. And here you have to provide your subscription details. First, you have to provide your subscription, which one you are going to use. Like I'm using over here, MST and Power BI subscription. You have to choose your resource group as well. I'm going to choose BCP demo. And here you have to provide the name. And in our case, I'm going to say BCP audit app. It's going to give me the error message that the app name BCP audit app is not available because I have already created, but I'm just showing you over here how to create it. So let's say for the time being, I'm seeing just one and now it's going to accept this one. Then choose this PowerShell core as your runtime stack version. Keep it as it is reason as well. You can save it as it is. Now go to the hosting tab. Once you are over here under the hosting pane there, you have to either create a new storage account or you can use what you have created earlier. 
So for, for the time being, I'm selecting this BCP demo 9329 and then go into the networking tab where you don't need to do anything. Go to the monitoring tab here. You can select some of the options if you would like to and over here you have to get one application inside. Either you can create the new one or you can use one of them that you have already created. So for that, I'm going to check this one BCP audit app inside in central US. Tags are the one that's going to help you in order to search your resources in the Azure portal. If you would like to create, you can create. Otherwise, simply review and create. And once you are going to do that, you are going to get this kind of information. So you can simply create it. I have already created my function app. So I'm going to show you over here. So this is my BCP audit app over here, which I have created. And you can get all the information. And you can also see that it's currently running and it's working pretty fine. Now, there are a couple of things that you have to do over here. First of all, we are going to upload all those modules that we have downloaded onto our portal so that once we are going to run this functionality or this app, it's going to work fine. For that, you have to come here on this pane, which is on your left hand side pane, come there under the tools. So there you can see some of the development tools are available over here. Please click on this advanced tools over here and click on the go button. Once you click over here, it's going to give you a new window where you can see some of the information. But what you have to do over here, you have to simply click on this debug console and then click on this command. Here you can come after sometimes you would see some of the text is going to get populated over here. So just click on this site button and here you can see this www root. Over here, click once more into this one and here you can start adding new folders. Currently, I have added two folders, modules and audit files. So what you can do, you can simply click on this and say create new folder. As soon as you would create new folder, you are going to give it a name like XYZ. You can see that it's going to create it over here and it's going to also give you path over here of the folder that you are going to create. But we really don't need it. So if you will go inside it, you can see this is going to be the part of your folder, which we are going to use later as well. So please keep this path with you. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to delete this folder because I really don't need it. I have already created like this two folders over here. One is audit files. Please keep this with you. I have already some of the files because I have already run my script. I'm just showing you how you can actually do it. So once you have created these two folders over here, audit and modules, under the module folder, you have to upload all the modules that you have, which you can see that I have all the modules this AZ copy I have moved it over here and then other seven modules as well please ignore these log files these are being created by the jobs that I'm running so you don't need to worry about that what you have to do you have to just drag and drop all the modules that you have downloaded or saved onto your system and please note that this part this is going to be very helpful you have to also note down this audit files path, which is this one, because this is going to be your very first location where you are going to get your all the audit files from Power BI service portal over here into your Azure portal. So this is the very first path. And once we are going to get these files under these audit files, then we can copy them to our blob storage. So that's what you have to do. The next step would be just to come again on this your audit app. And here we are going to create a function. First come to this app files. Here you should get three different files over here or three different codes. One would be like JSON. If it's not there, then your scripts are not going to work. So please make sure it's there. Second would be profiles.ps1. It should be as it is over here. And the third one would be requirements.phd1. If you don't have these, then definitely you are going to get error while running your scripts. So this is very important. Secondly, what you have to do, you have to come under this identity pane as well. Over here, you have to select this and please make sure that it's switched on. Generally, by default, it's switched off. So if it's switched off, you're going to encounter again the errors. So you won't be able to do it. Please make it switched on. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to go back to our storage account. So. I have created this storage account. 
In this storage account, what you have to do, you have to create certain folders or the containers if you haven't created already. And secondly, once you created your app, you can also see your app name over here under the file share. So very first, we are going to create a container over here. Go to this container. And here I have created a container with the name of PBI test. If you haven't created, you can just click on this plus button and you can create a container over here. And please note down this container name because we are going to use it as well. Then what you have to do, you have to click on this file shares. And here you can see that this file share name is appearing over here. It's generally going to be the same name as of your app, but there would be some numbers behind it. For example, I, can, I have created bcp audit app and then there is a some number behind it and on the container select your container then you have to come on your left hand side where you get this share access tokens so please select this one over here you can directly generate this access token and url and over here copy this blob sas url which is going to help you while getting or copying the data into this blob container from audit files folder. So that's all you have to do over here. Now we are going to come back on our home page and over here you have to select again this function app. Here I have to come this again under my function app which is BCP audit app. So what I'm going to do over here now my next task is to create a function because we haven't created the function all the prerequisite has been done. So you have to come under this function. And here you can create a new function if you would like to and I have already created a function so I'm just gonna show you. After some time you can see that I have already created one function with the name PBI get activity events and in your case what you can do just click on this plus button. Here it's gonna take some time and then you have to select this develop in portal. Please make sure that you have always choose this develop in portal and secondly you have to choose this timer trigger because it's going to be based on a timer here you can come down again and you can give it a name so please make sure that you have given a name particular name and for that i'm just saying schedule bcp function or you can give it any name it totally depends on you it totally depends on you and over here you have to also provide the schedule and for the schedule we are going to use this format and if you are not aware about the, any of the format, so what you can do, you can go to a link that you can see is appearing on your screen. Please check this link. I'm also going to provide this link in the description section from where you can check that out. So it's going to be very easy, but for the timing, you can even use this way. Now, we have to just simply create it, which I have already done it. And once you're gonna create, you're gonna get something like this. And in that one, you now really need your script to work on it so what you can do you have to just paste your script over here I have already my script and I have pasted it over here then you have to do certain changes into your script according to the containers the app or all the you know folders that you have created so far so you have to make sure that you have all with you and if you really don't have then definitely you are gonna encounter a lot of errors so First, you need your storage account name. Second, you need your SAS URL that you are going to use for accessing the container. Thirdly, you are going to also need your root folder name that we created. So from the www root, you are going to need two root folder names or their address. One is from audit file, another from the modules. So once you paste this script that I have provided you, you have to change your credentials and your other information into this one because this is not gonna work for you. And now I have hidden my password into this one. And I also know that writing a password in a script is not good, but you can find some other ways to automate it. And in this script, you have to change certain information. So first of all, at line nine and 10, you have to provide your credentials over here. Then what you have to do, you have to come to line number 29, where you have to provide the url that we just talked about from the audit files of the ww root folder that please provide it over here you can see that then you have to come down and please scroll down to line number 78 and in the line number 78 what i'm doing over here i'm providing the storage account name that we used while creating the audit app also you have to provide your storage account key 
If you don't know how to get the storage account key, please do let me know in the comment section. However, it's pretty simple. What you have to do, you have to again go on your portal.azure.com. Please go over there, go to your storage account and also you can see the keys over here and then you can get the key from this portal. You can just click on this show keys and then you can get the key from here. So as I mentioned you, you have to go to your blob account over here. Let me just go to my blob container and please come here into your blob container. Then you have to get your shared access token from this one. So this is really important. Please don't forget this and paste it over here as it is. You are going to get the full URL including your SES token inside it and you can paste it over here. Then you have to also copy the location of the log file so which you can see over here modules one. I am using it over here. So please change it according to yours. And then not only this you have to also write this piece of code over here where you can see I am using modules and under modules which is my easycopy.exe file that you have to mention over here and then it's done. That's all you need to do. Once everything is done just test and run this one. It's going to ask you inputs. So please give the input as master host key and once you are going to input this master host key you can simply click on run. There are two more options so please don't use them they are not going to be valid over here so just run and now you can start your job over here so i'm going to maximize this one so wait for a couple of seconds now my job has started as you can see and it's going to work and you can see that there's no failure and it's working fine now if you really want to check whether your files are coming or not first we have to head over to our audit files folder so please go over there and here i can see that 831 time is over there and if i'll just you know go over there so 832 is there so it's just downloaded over here you can see 832 my files have been downloaded and this is another file where i have my all the data you can simply download it and also you can open this file where you would find all the records so let's do it and here you can see that my all the audit records are over here so it's working pretty fine now the second part would be where we have to copy all these files into our blob storage account for that you can come to your home on this portal.azure.com go to your storage account in my case my storage account is this one and here i can go to my containers inside container i have created one container with the name of pbi test go over here and here you can see that on 831 i got this file which is uh, the name convention that i provided in my script and it's working pretty fine i hope now you know how to get the audit data from power bi service portal to your blob storage account and also you know what are the different steps that you need to follow if you have any question and concern please don't forget to let us know you can put your comment in the comment section and guys, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI videos and updates. See you in the next video.